Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this uh, Blitz Test post postmortem. This is a postmortem of my Blitz game number uh, 306. And uh, I was white here, and I wanted to play the Reti opening, so I try knight f3, and my opponent plays c6. So, very unusual response. Um, but uh, if we back up, let's see. Most common response here is knight f6, just mimicking, or d5 which after d5, c4, we'd get into the reti proper. What we're in is, is a slightly offbeat opening after uh, I play c4. Oh, I just wanted to point out that c6, yeah, c6 uh, gives up some of the advantage with best play. But, uh, well, I didn't go down the main line here. He went d5, and I could go d4 and just go into a Slav. Or e3, the engine thinks e3 is the best. Um, but I was still intent on playing a reti setup, so I thought, uh, well, let's try fianchettoing the other bishop. That's characteristic of the reti, is you get some fianchettos. And um, so this is an okay opening for white. Um, but maybe if I just grabbed the center and played in a more traditional way, I would have had <laughs> slightly more of an advantage. But I was using this uh, opening as a way to uh, <coughs> experiment, try, try different lines than what I usually get. Okay, so we're doing so far, and it's interesting that uh, all these moves are in the opening book because I was sort of uh, improvising from about the second or third move. Um, but I, I guess it just goes to show how many moves have been tried. Knight f6 is the main move here, and uh, that's what was played, and I played bishop e2, just uh, m freeing up my queen to move without having to worry about uh, him taking my knight here. And now knight bd7. And knight c3, appear, apparently castles is the main move here, but you see all these moves retain a slight edge for white. And then um, he plays a6 here, a bit unusual. Now this setup is uh, something you often see in the Slav defense, and uh, the idea is to get rid of the light squared bishop and uh, have, advantage, have the advantage of the, the dark squared bishop and the pawns on light colors. Um, it's a very hard structure to crack. Um, so I decided, um, since he's putting all his pawns on light squares, which hems in this bishop, I'm not going to be in any hurry to trade it off. So I was going to let it, uh, let it exist for a while. So I kick it. Well, first of all, if he trades it for the knight, then I'll be happy because I'll have the bishop here and I'll just try and find a way to open it up and take advantage of that. Um, but actually, uh, the, the book move and uh, the chess engine recommendation are that he should... He should take that knight and just trade up off that bishop. That really is the idea in this uh, with this pawn structure is to get rid of that light squared bishop. Um, but he didn't do that. I castled. And you see here at move 10, I think, uh, well, here we're only at move 9. If I had played uh, black, if black had played bishop d6, we'd still be in the book. He went bishop e7, and I went um, d4. Yeah, and I think now we're finally really out of the opening book. So... Uh, Surprising. I guess there's there's no real new moves this early in the game. Or they're hard to find. Um, so my opponent castled here. And uh, I went on with c5. c5 is a bit of a controversial decision. It locks this uh, pawn structure down. And uh, it gives me this square on um, b6 where the knight could go. And maybe cause some trouble over here on the queen side. But a lot of times um, the knight turns out to be out of play over here. So it's not clear um, if this is such a huge advantage. The other, the other reason for playing it also is uh, maybe in the end game, these, uh, these backwards, in the end game, these backward pawns will become weak over here. So anyway, I went with c5. It's just another way to play. It's not, uh, <clears throat> not giving away the advantage, but um, it also, the, the, the downside is it releases some tension on the center. You're no longer threatening to take on uh, d5 there. Um, so my opponent plays rook e8, and I play queen d2, and then he went b5, and I thought that was a mistake. The engine says I should leave the pawn there and just play knight e5. Interesting way to play. I thought taking was good, because this um, leaves this uh, backwards pawn here. I just need to get a rook over, and, and I have a natural target. Um, the engine is recommending taking back with the queen. He took back with the knight, and you know, so I immediately put my rook on the c file opposite the weak pawn. And I guess the thing is, he can play c5 immediately. That's why this operation isn't so great, um, because that's defended, and he probably should. That's the engine's recommendation. That's what I'd do in this position. You want to you want to get rid of your weakness, and uh, it also 
activate this uh, dark squared bishop. Okay, but he didn't do that. He played uh, queen c7. And now I went uh, knight e5. And at this point I thought uh, getting rid of the bishop would help. And also I'm, I'm creating a square for my knight to come into so I can uh, target this uh, c5 pawn. So knight to bd7 is a recommended move. But you can see already that uh, <clears throat> white has, has a strong advantage. Almost a one pawn advantage. So maybe that means there's no way for him to defend the pawn. But uh, the way he played it, uh, he gives up the pawn ra rather easily with uh, knight bd7. And then I can just take it. So I've won a pawn. And... Um, I have, I have a knight in an interesting position here, but it doesn't have any great squares to go to from there. So um, I decided, after he moved uh, his queen to d6, I decided just to trade off the knight for his bishop, which is a, a good bishop uh, in this pawn structure. So I think that's a reasonable choice. Um, but now I'm faced with a problem, which is um, we still have the same number of pieces. I'm just a pawn up. But I have to activate all my pieces, or my opponent really will have the advantage. And um, this uh, bishop here is a bad bishop. It's just staring at this pawn, which is stuck and not moving anywhere. So I need to find a way to activate the bishop. And the engine, <clears throat> the chess engine, comes up with the interesting idea here, which is to play the move queen a5, putting pressure on the queen side pawns, and maybe uh, supporting the idea of bishop to a3, putting this bishop on a good diagonal. So I like that plan. Uh, now that I've seen it, <laughs> now that the chess engine has pointed out to me, I like that plan. Uh, what I tried was something else. I tried to uh, maneuver my knight around and, and push the center pawns forward to try and open up uh, this diagonal the bishop is sitting on. But this is slower, and um, it's just not as effective. You see my advantage starts to decrease. My opponent places a rook on the c-file. And... Um, I get my rook to e1. I need more help to push the e-pawn. And he played rook e to d8. And now I push on with e4. And apparently this is a badly timed push. My advantage has dropped once again. Um, well, it leaves me with this weak pawn. What I didn't see, I guess, e takes, knight takes, is he's got this um, <clears throat> great outpost for the knight here. And, uh, and he'll get there pretty quickly. He plays knight f6. Notice I still have an advantage. But uh, it's dropped tremendously from what it was. And now rook e to e1. I should probably just go all the way back. Um, I was thinking I wanted the rook in front of the queen so I could push this pawn forward. But uh, that's not happening because he's just going to drop his knight in here to uh, e4. And I can't ever push that pawn forward. So I'm going to have to find a different diagonal for the bishop anyway. So that's why uh, moving it over to this diagonal earlier on in the game would have been a better plan than the plan I came up with. Um, so he just goes here to d5 naturally, and I put my rook behind the pawn. Cancel that. What did I play here? Oh, I played rook takes c8 first. He takes back, and then I went rook d3. So the engine is saying the rook should just drop back to e1, and I think that's probably right. Then I don't know that the uh, the rook has any business here. I was carrying on with the uh, the old plan, which doesn't make any sense now that his knight is here. This um, so. Rerouting the rook back to e1 would have been the best way to go. And now you'll see, even though I'm still a pawn up, uh, my opponent is totally equalized. Just because um, the position of my pieces, they're all uh, really passive. They're all staring. <laughs> they're all staring at my own pawn, which is not going anywhere. <laughs> so it's really kind of a, a funny setup, but not good for me. Okay, so my opponent develops with queen f6, and I play the rook to f3. So he's giving me a chance to uh, activate my pieces a bit. Um, and uh, that helps me out. And finally, I get my oh uh, bishop a3. It's suggesting I played bishop to c3. I thought you know if he wants to trade his knight for my bishop, that really helps me because this is a good piece and this is a bad piece. But he's not going to fall for that. He pushes on with um, h5, and um, I play b4, just trying to open up this diagonal. Maybe get my bishop out this way. And he plays h4, and I play a4. And now um, the advantage swings completely to um, to black's favor. It was already a bit of a problem here um, because he can uh, penetrate to my back rank with a check. Now my queen is defending the a-pawn. 
but that's the problem. That's why my rook maybe would have been served better by coming back to e1 instead of uh, going to d3 and now to uh, f3. Anyway, so that's that's where I went wrong. I lifted my rook, I pushed my pawns, and now um, he's taking advantage of my weak back rank. Gives me the check, the king has to move, and he goes queen b3. And um, so I went bishop a1, getting my bishop out of the way and attacking his queen. Um, with best play, let's show how the game should have continued. He should have uh, taken here. Um, that's funny. I thought he would have taken the b pawn. I wonder if there's a problem with the queen takes b4. That's okay as well. But after queen takes b4, um, oh, the exchange. The engine doesn't like the exchange. Well, this is about even. The material is even, and uh, with the queens off, I guess. Uh, I guess black's advantage is going away. So if he takes on a4, he, he picks up the pawn, so he's equalized the material, and he still has just much better pieces than me. It's recommending bishop back to c3 or bishop to b2, and then queen to c2. That forces an exchange, and ah, in this position his rook is much more active, and he also has the idea of coming here. And my, my bishop can't go to uh, c3 to block him. So that would have been uh, a logical way for the game to continue. Uh, unfortunately, this game was played at the really fast time control. It was, it was actually an accident. I typed in the wrong command. So it was five minutes with three second increment. And my opponent was just running out of time here. So he played, uh, he probably had calculated this sequence of moves in advance and failed to notice his queen was hanging. So he just played these moves uh, really quickly. And uh, after I take his queen, then he resigned. So uh, that's how the game ended. And it's just interesting. It shows how I got an advantage, but then I failed to... Um, I failed to liberate my bishop. So in this position here, um, this plan starting with knight g3 um, <clears throat> was okay, but not the best plan. And then uh, later on, I even opened up my queen side and let him uh, penetrate and get the advantage. So uh, got to watch out for that. <laughs> got to uh, keep all your pieces active and uh, and look for those... Uh, Watch out for your opponent's opportunities to penetrate and make sure you prevent them. Okay, that's the lesson of this game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, leave any comments you have in the section below, and I will see you again soon. Bye.